Hi, good morning everyone. I am K. Narsi Murthy. I am working in a government first grade women's college, Tumkur. The subject which I am presenting the video is physics. The topic which I am presenting today is for the second semester BSc students of Tumkur University. This is my 23rd video for the second semester of Tumkur University students. So in the first unit I have presented 15 videos, almost 25% of this 15 videos covers 25% of the syllabus. In the second unit this is my 8th video, overall it is the 23rd video which I am presenting for the first BSc that means to say the second semester students. Now this second unit is completely about magnetostatics. In the magnetostatic, the very important loss we come across is the bayard savarts law and the Ampere circuit law. We applied these laws and we found the magnetic field at different cases for a straight conductor, for circular coil and for the solenoid. These are the three different cases we discussed and I found the magnetic field using these two laws, Bayard Savard's law as well as Ampere Circuital law. And I have solved many problems regarding these uh, straight conductors, circular coils and the uh, solenoid. In my last previous video, I have done the torque which is acting on the coil which is placed in a magnetic field. In fact, it's a current carrying coil. Torque acting on the current carrying coil placed in a magnetic field. I have derived the expression for the torque. A current carrying conductor will experience a force due to magnetic field, which we call it as mechanical effect of electric current. A coil which is placed in a magnetic field will experience a torque and coil tends to rotate because of this torque. Conductor will experience a force, coil will experience a torque and it tends to rotate because of the torque which is produced due to the magnetic field. Now with the same principle the instrument which works here is the ballastic galvanometer. The ballastic galvanometer is a specially designed galvanometer is to study, is to measure the sudden flow of charges for a small interval of time. Even your ammeters will also measure the current, but the sudden flow of charge they cannot measure. But this is a very sensitive instrument which measures sudden flow of charge for a short interval of time. This is in fact a very very sensitive instrument. Right, first we will see the construction of this velocity galvanometer and then we will see the theory of it. Yeah, there is some... Yeah, so first we will see the construction and then we will see the theory of it. Yeah. Here this ballastic galvanometer consists of a rectangular coil. It is a rectangular coil PQRS with many number of turns and this coil is wound on a non-magnetic frame. A rectangular coil PQRS which is wound on a non-magnetic frame. And this coil is suspended between the two strong powerful magnets north and south pole of a strong permanent magnets using a very thin phosphor branch wire. Students you have to observe one thing here. This coil which is a rectangular coil having n number of turns will be suspended by means of a thin wire that is phosphor bronze wire and that is placed between the two strong powerful permanent magnets. You can look at the diagram and see 
This is the rectangular coil PQRS and this is suspended by means of a phosphor brass wire and this rectangular coil is placed between the north and south pole of the magnet. Next. The moment of inertia of a moving coil system is made large so that the coil takes longer time to oscillate in a magnetic field. This is a trick. We need a longer time to oscillate. So how to make the time longer? It is just because the you made the moment of inertia large. Because these two are constants. If you make moment of inertia large, the time taken will also, will also be large. Therefore, this is a trick to make the time longer by making the moment of inertia of the system larger. Okay, so this can be done. You can increase the moment of inertia just by increasing the area or by increasing the distribution of mass. Uh, you can increase the moment of inertia. With the increase in the moment of inertia, the time taken for oscillation will be longer. Okay. If time taken for oscillation is longer, it is much easier for us to measure the oscillation. It is much, much easier for us to measure the time period, time taken for the oscillation. Right. Now these pole pieces are curved so that the magnetic fields in between is always radial and uniform for any position in the coil. You take any position in the coil, field is uniform and it is radial. Okay. Right. Suspension wire, which I told you, the rectangular coil is suspended by means of a phosphor branch wire. And this suspension wire acts like a terminal for the current to pass through the coil. This is a one terminal for the current to pass through the coil. And a small hair spring is connected at the bottom of the coil which serves as an another terminal. I will show you in the diagram. Look, this wire which is suspended is one terminal for the current to flow through the coil. And a small hair spring which is attached to the bottom, you can look at the diagram. There is a small hair spring at the bottom of the coil, PQRS. This spring will act like an another terminal. You need two terminal to pass the current through the coil. So one suspension wire will act like an one terminal. This spring will act like an another terminal. So we have two terminals. That's enough to uh, that's enough for the current to flow through the coil. And one more thing here is a small mirror is attached to the suspension wire which helps us to measure the twist produced in the coil with the help of lamp and scale arrangement. Now it is a very interesting technique where we are measuring the twist produced in the coil. We know coil is twisted because of the torque produced when this coil is placed in a magnetic field. So here we need to measure the twist which is produced in the coil theta. To measure the twist, we have an arrangement made here. It is called lamp and scale arrangement. For that, you need to have a, a small mirror strip attached to the suspension. Look back and see the diagram. See the M. M is a small mirror which is attached to the suspension wire. Now, how this lamp and scale arrangement actually works? What happens here is we are incidenting a light from outside to fall on the mirror M. I am putting a torch here. I am incidenting the light to fall on the mirror M. And this light is reflected back on the scale, on the horizontal scale which I kept here. Here is a light I am incidenting on the mirror M and the reflected light is falling on the horizontal scale. If this coil rotates, if the coil is twisted, the mirror will also get twisted. Therefore, the light which is reflected from this mirror will move on the horizontal scale. Okay. If coil is twisted, the uh, this light reflected here will move on the horizontal scale. By measuring the moment of the light on the horizontal scale, we can measure the twist produced. We can calculate the twist produced in the coil 
and this arrangement is known as lamp and scale arrangement now we have a scale here we have a lamp here okay so i'm i'm incidenting the light on the mirror m which is attached to the suspension wire of the coil and that light is reflected back on the mirror by knowing the moment of light on the mirror we can calculate the twist produced in the coil this technique is known as lamp and scale arrangement okay now the entire assembly is kept inside a chamber glass with a glass window uh, which prevents any external disturbance to the motion of the coil see we need to keep the entire system in a separate chamber because to avoid the disturbance for the motion of the coil see the motion of the coil is very very sensitive it is because of the torque which is produced in the coil not because of any external disturbances this twist should be purely from the torque which is produced from the coil which is placed in a magnetic field not from the any other external disturbances so to avoid external disturbances on the coil so it has to be enclosed in a separate chamber with a glass window of course you need to have a glass window because so the light which is which i am incidenting with a lamp and scale arrangement has to fall on the mirror which is attached to the suspension wire of the coil so because of the light to fall there is a glass window there which allows the light to fall on the mirror so this is all the construction of the ballistic galvanometer next we will see the theory of it yeah now we have a rectangular coil pqrs the coil is placed in a magnetic field the two sides qr and sp do not experience any force look at these two go back and see the diagram look at this qr and sp it is because the magnetic field is horizontal here this qr and sp will be parallel to the direction of the magnetic field this qr and sp will makes an angle theta zero with the magnetic field therefore if theta is zero we know the force is bil sin theta so sin zero is zero the force on these two conductors qr and ps is zero there is no force from on this qr and ps because of the magnetic field we know this pq and rs will experience a force because this two conductors are perpendicular to the magnetic field where sin 90 is 1 therefore these two will experience a force the force is b i l these two will experience as an equal force this pq will also experience the force b i l and this rs will also experience a force b i l these two will experience as equal but opposite force so one will be coming outwards another will be going inwards use and fleming left hand rule this is the current this is the magnetic field and the thumb will gives you the direction of force for the case of pq thumb is moving outwards it is directed towards me it is coming outwards for the rs if you take like this this is the rs for the rs it is going inwards thumb is going inwards okay for pq the force is outwards for rs the force is inwards therefore these two equal unlike parallel forces will constitute a couple this constitute a couple one so because of this couple the coil rotates okay right will we'll see here okay now the two are equal and unlike parallel forces which is acting on the coil will constitute a couple couple will rotates the coil okay now what is the torque torque we can calculate it is force into perpendicular distance perpendicular distance is b if the plane is parallel to the magnetic field if th this is making some angle this is making some inclination if the axis of the plane makes an angle theta with the with the magnetic field then we have to be very careful we have to write b sin theta if plane is parallel to magnetic field you can write it as b simply b but plane is if it is not making 
not parallel to the magnetic field it has it if it has some inclination you need to write b sin theta for the perpendicular distance because it is b cos of 90 minus theta will be b sin theta yes n into b i l into b sin theta so we know that length into breadth is area area of that coil so tau is equal to n b i a in this case theta is 90 it is because the plane is parallel to the magnetic field i mean to say axis is perpendicular to the magnetic field axis of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field theta is 90 i mean to say plane is parallel to the magnetic field so i can substitute theta as 90 and i got torque as n b i a i have derived this equation in my last video tau as n b i a where i is if i if the current i acts for a short interval of time dt i can calculate the angular impulse now i can say that the angular impulse is torque into the short period which this torque acts this tau into dt will give you the angular impulse so angular impulse is equal to n b i a that means tau into dt will give you the angular impulse yes if i want a total angular impulse i need to integrate n b i a into dt okay so this n a b is a constant you can take out the integral it is nothing to do with the time so now it is integral of i dt now you know that integral of i dt is the charge q it's a very very simple thing dq by dt differentiation of the charge is current current is a rate of flow of charge i is equal to dq by dt so if you take it in a reverse way this q is equal to integral of i dt q is integral of i dt so therefore integral of i dt can be written as q now now the angular impulse means if there is a coil if the angular impulse is given to the coil which changes its angular momentum the impulse which is given to the coil changes its angular momentum so impulse is equal to change in angular momentum we know the impulse is n a b q which is equal to change in angular momentum what is the change in angular momentum i know beginning the coil is at rest angular momentum is zero when impulse acts on the coil the angular momentum becomes i omega where i is the moment of inertia omega is the angular velocity the moment you give the impulse to the coil its angular momentum will change and the angular momentum becomes i omega earlier angular momentum is zero so it is i omega minus zero will give us i omega so this angular impulse is equal to the change in angular momentum n a b q is equal to i omega from this equation i got omega as n a b q by i i am calling it as equation one now these are the terms which which i am define going to define q is the total charge flowing in a coil i is the moment of inertia omega is the angular velocity now what i am taking is c is the restoring couple per unit twist then the couple on the twist theta is c theta per unit twist the couple is c for the twist theta couple is c theta exactly how i always say that the 1 kg sugar is 40 rupees the 5 kg sugar is 40 into 5 for unit twist couple is c for the twist theta couple is c theta now we need, i need to calculate the work done so work done for the additional twist theta is in c theta into d theta if i integrate this i will get a total work done from 0 to theta if i integrate this i will get a total work from 0 to theta and the integration of c theta in fact it's d theta c theta d theta with the integral from 0 to theta it is half c theta square so integration of theta is theta square by 2 apply the limit it is half c theta square 
this is the work done in twisting this suspension coil now kinetic energy of this rotation is half i omega square we know it is half i omega square just like in linear motion how i say it is half mv square instead of mass here it is moment of inertia instead of velocity it is angular velocity so kinetic energy is half i omega square so this kinetic energy is what actually the work done in twisting the suspension wire so kinetic energy is equal to the work done therefore half i omega square is equal to half c theta square because this is what the kinetic energy which will be useful for doing the work which will makes the coil to rotate so this kinetic energy is equal to the actual work done so kinetic energy half i omega square is equal to the work done half c theta square from that i can extract omega square as c theta square divided by i this is what equation 2 so earlier i got equation 1 okay which is omega as na b q by i now i got equation 2 which is omega square as c theta square i by i now i equate equate this equation 1 and 2 so there it is omega if i do omega square it is na b q by i whole square on the right hand side is omega square which is c theta square by i if i do some cross multiplication and i get an equation for q square as i square c theta square by n square a square b square i okay so one i square will cancel with the one i in the denominator and this yes c will be there in the numerator n n square a square b okay after multiplying dividing by c so i'll get c square in the numerator and i by c within the bracket in theta square now see what i'm going to write in the next equation now i know period of oscillation of the coil we have an equation for period of oscillation t is equal to 2 pi root of i by c if i do t square it is 4 pi square i by c so if i do i by c it is t square by 4 pi so that is why i have written this i by c within the bracket in the equation 3 so instead of i by c in the equation 3 i am substituting t square by 4 pi square where t is the period of oscillation so uh, my equation for q is c by n a b t by 2 pi square into theta so i got equation for the charge which is flowing through the coil so if i know this c couple per unit feet if i know number of tons if i know the area if i know the magnetic field if i know the period of oscillation if i know the theta throw then with all these uh, quantities i can easily find out the charge which is flowing through the coil of the ballastic galvanometer and i need to define one more quantity here which is k which is c by nab is known as galvanometer constant so i can just write in a simplified way q as k t by 2 pi into theta this is the expression for charge which is flowing through the coil of the ballastic galvanometer i can define another term here which is k dash which is called ballastic constant or ballastic reduction factor which is k by 2 pi k into t by 2 pi one more thing i am going to do here is torque acting on the coil i know it is c theta so n a b i which is torque can be equated to the c theta so i can get an equation for current as c by n a b theta this indicates that deflection theta is in the ballastic galvanometer is directly proportional to the current flowing through it if more current flows through the coil you will get a more deflection okay so it, it this equation will directly tells you that theta depends on the current if there is a more current in the coil if it is a 10 ampere current you will get a more deflection if it is a 5 ampere current you will get a deflection off of that so deflection in a coil will be directly proportional to the current because the current will decides the torque which is acting on the coil okay current will decides the couple which is acting on the coil that is why if there is a more current there you can expect a more deflection in the galvanometer right 
this is one very important question for the exam it's a construction and theory of the ballastic galvanometer maybe it is too lengthy but derivation is very very simple if you practice it it will be very very easy okay so it is one of the very important question for the exam and we have an experiment on the ballastic galvanometer in the lab also you can see that instrument you can enjoy doing the uh, uh, the uh, experiment with a ballastic galvanometer very very sensitive experiment that is why in any lab for that matter nobody will keep you the ballastic galvanometer on the table this bg will always be kept in some wall inside the wall if you make a small hole and put a bg inside the wall because a very small touch of a table will dis disturb the coil of the galvanometer it is a very very sensitive and it is suspended by a very thin wire if you if you push an air then this the coil will starts rotating therefore to avoid that this bg will always be kept in the wall okay so that that's why in many colleges they won't do this bg experiment at all because it's a really a very sensitive experiment and a challenging experiment for the teachers as well as for the students also so thank you very much thank you